going live. It took a minute because my screen orientation was funky. Okay. Hello. Um, let's see. Do we want to just do that, do that, do that, do that? Let's do that. All right. Hey, Josh. I told you I'd do it today. How are you, sweetheart? Hello, Jamie. I can actually fix the orientation on my phone. How about that? <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, Christopher. Psycho Orange. Hi, everybody. I haven't been here in a while, so it's good to see everybody. Hey, Michael. Hey, Andrew. Jonathan. I love it. Marlon. Hey, Marlon. I love that you call me a young lady. Thank you very much. BP, Aaron, oh, thank you, Fist of Fury, Wild Who, Jack's here, oh, I love it, Turtle Power Cosplay, hey, Trevor, uh, hey, Marlon, it's good to see you, hey, Eric, I know, I've missed you guys, too, it's been um, a while since I've done this offer to Hi Love Bug, live, hello from Argentina. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, okay. All right. We've got some folks here. So, you know, I wasn't around all last month. Um, hey, geeked out turtle fan 42. Yeah, I miss you too, Josh. Um, I'm glad I'm here. I'm a little disheveled, but we don't care. We don't care. We can be a little disheveled. Um, Wild Who, yeah, it was great to meet you in Raleigh, but I don't know what your name is. I just, that's your screen name. Hey, Brittany, how are you, Lee? I love it. Josh wants to know if I'm going to do a superhero or villainous next. You know what? You never know. You never know what's coming down the pike. Um, okay, so I... Oh, you're so sweet. I'm trying to get this thing off my, there we go. Now I can see everybody. Andy, hey, how are you, my friend? Um, okay, Marlon from, oh yes, Atlanta, okay. Yes, 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 that was, that was it. Uh, Brittany met Kimberly and showed you our picture. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, I had met, I had met, you in, where was it? Was it Raleigh? And said, show Kimberly this picture. So I'm glad that she did. All right. So haven't seen you in a while. You know, it's summertime and you've got to take a little time for yourself to just kind of, I'm trying to adjust this. I'm sitting under my new skylight. I just got a new roof put on, which is a thrilling thing here. I want to just try to make this a nice frame for everybody. There we go. Um, yeah, I just got new skylights and I have to say, um, for League of Their Own Prime, no secret. Uh, I got to start reading these. Um, <clears throat> but where I live, uh, we get a lot of rain and a lot of weather. And so, um, you know, you gotta have a good roof. And our roof was just crazy, not good. So we decided while we were doing it, let's go ahead and put on um, in some skylights. So um, I love it. I have these views that are just killing me. Every time I come down the stairs from my bedroom, I'm, I, I'm just in heaven and I'm so grateful that I'm able to put a roof on my house or a roof over my head. Just gratitude, just gratitude for everything. Um, so last time I was supposed to be here in July and I had asked people to submit questions and then we had a water main break. It was not um, so much fun. There's still kind of a big hole out there that we're working on. It's all good, it's all good. We have water, that's what matters. Um, but I had to be all hands on deck um, and help my husband, who is just the most amazing 
man when it comes to fixing, building, making anything. It's just wonderful what he can do. But I had asked some questions and there were relationships questions that came up. And then when I asked people questions as well for this month, um, relationships came up again. And I know that, you know, relationships are some of the most important things in our lives. All kinds of relationships, working relationships and relationships with our family members, with our friends, with our community, with our coworkers. Um, but also with the people that we love, that our lovers, our, our other halves, our boyfriends, girlfriends, partners, what, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. It's everything. Whatever that person is that you connect deepest to. And I'm not going to call out names because they're, they're pretty... Um, the questions themselves are pretty intimate questions, so, you know, I'll just answer them. Um, but the first one is about relationships and, like, I'll just read the question. My question is tied to relationships. I find it all so complicated. There's many conflicting, conflicting messages on how to find someone. I'm constantly comparing myself to others and picking myself apart, thinking you should be more like this or people won't like this about you or that. I know that the easy answer is to just be yourself, but I find that a lot harder than people make it out to be today. So I suppose in short, my question is, how do you be yourself? And what gives you the strength to continuously and unashamedly be yourself? Um, so where do you even begin to unwrap this onion? It is complicated. I find the strength to continuously and unashamedly be myself by practicing doing that. Just practicing it. I... I think the most important relationship that you have is with yourself. And we live in a world, and certainly, I can only speak from the United States, but it has been my experience that this is just a human characteristic, that we have been trained away from our own infinite wisdom, our own true selves. Like the things that you love, and if people don't, yeah, Sun Tzu says your first battle is always with yourself. Lord Jimbo, you always come in with wisdom. Um, and it is. It's, it's really allowing the person that you were born as to see the sunlight in their face. In the face of other people not agreeing with it parents who maybe told you you were too loud or too much or not loud enough or not enough or messages from teachers you're not smart enough or you need to sit still or you need to be quiet or you why don't you ever answer your you know raise your hand and answer a question and you know it's really challenging because biologically we are wired to be part of a pack we are wired to be part of a community, to, to um, to not be ostracized by our tribe, in in which we will be left behind. So when we were nomadic, or when before there were cities, before when we were first biologically created, we were created for connection, and. You know, it's what a mother does with a child um, when they're first born. You know, there is that connection that must be made. And so we're biologically wired to connect with each other. And you don't want to, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. You don't want to be left out of the crowd. So that's a biological imperative that we have. And... We don't really live in those circumstances anymore, and yet we do. So being yourself, living your truth, 
can get you into trouble. It can get your parents mad at you. It can get your friends mad at you. It can have people saying to you, well, you're kind of crazy. I'm going to try to, I'm in a lot of sun here. Sorry about that. Um, you know, stop being you. Stop doing you. I mean, really from a young age, we are told this. And so, of course, it's going to create confusion. And then we live in a media-driven, advertising, consumer-driven culture where we are shown examples of what we're supposed to look like, how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to feel. And then, of course, if we don't feel that way, there's all these wonderful opportunities to get all kinds of pharmaceutical drugs to help you feel that way. And that opens up a whole new thing of you know, our mental health. And so all of that is to say that one of the boldest, most courageous things that a person can do in their lives is to walk their truth, is to be yourself. And I think you kind of have to do it radically. And dare I say, suffer the consequences. And those consequences can be quite phenomenal and positive. There can be a positive consequence. I guess we always think of it as a negative. Maybe I need to look up the definition. But there are positive outcomes. And that being yourself is, is the road to freedom. It's how you set yourself free. And it is not for the faint of heart because it makes people upset. And now let's get into relationships. So relationships are complicated if we, particularly if we don't have a good relationship with ourselves because often we are looking for to another person to fix us or be a certain way so that we feel good. And a lot of times, we've all done it. You know, when we're first out there and we're meeting somebody, like we're just showing our best parts. All the shiny, pretty, charming, charismatic, witty, funny, smart, together parts. Except none of us are all of that all the time. We have, those are components of who we are. That is a piece of who we are, but it is not all of who we are. We are complicated. We have days when we've got it together <clears throat> and days and weeks and months and sometimes years when we don't. And so oftentimes we are looking to other people to fill our voids and that is a fruitless pursuit. Nobody can ever fill your void. Not really. Not forever. Not for, for longer than a little while. And asking somebody to do that for you is pretty rough for the other person because as soon as they don't behave or show up the way that you want them to, there's hell to pay, then, um, then it's absolutely, you know, a recipe for an unhealthy relationship. <clears throat> so back to the question here, because I feel like, um, I really want to answer this in a way that I'm making sense so that it actually helps somebody, anybody. Being yourself is a really good starting place. And I really commend you for putting that into your question. Learning yourself, finding your real deep down soulful truth is a lifelong journey. And it, it absolutely takes some digging around and some 
peering into your depths, into your soul. And doing it, I always feel like when we're doing self-examination, it's really important to do it as gently as possible. And I think that one of the greatest things, I was in therapy actually right after Ninja Turtles came out because some traumatic things sort of happened uh, around it for me. And um, I really needed to get some clarity and I got into therapy for four years. And it was one of the greatest things that I've ever done. And one of the things that we did in therapy is we did a lot of inner child work and it was sort of going back to childhood wounds and, and going through some of that, which I don't think is absolutely necessary, necessarily, except that there's a piece that was really, really helpful which was that um, I started treating myself, that child in me that was wounded, that child in me that didn't always get what it was that she really needed, that child that was misunderstood, that child that was not always... Um, treated with kid gloves. And, and, and I came from a great family. I have amazing parents and I, I am very blessed on that score. And I think even within that, we're all such unique little beings <clears throat> who have very unique needs and desires. And it's, it can be very difficult to have those met, especially, uh, you know, with parents who are dealing with and going through their own journeys. But the thing that I learned, and I know I'm taking a long time to get there, is that when I mothered myself, when I really nurtured the inner child in me, I was a lot gentler with me. I would just try to see myself as that three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old. And it helped me to be a lot kinder to myself. So I think one of the things in relationships is the more you are connected and in touch with yourself, um, the less you need other people to fill you up, the less you need that relationship to fill a void that you have. And it's more about connecting and building something together. Um, and it's challenging. And I think one of the biggest disservices that we do to ourselves, and I know that certainly that I have done to myself, is when I'm picking myself apart. It just does no good. I'm not saying that self-examination isn't an important thing. What I'm saying is self-examination when we are shredding ourselves in a very unkind, not compassionate, self-loathing angry, destructive way is not going to help us. And I think there's something else that is also mentioned here. It's about constantly comparing ourselves to other people. And that's a real challenge because we live in a culture and now, you know, we see it all over. I mean, every time you go on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, it's, you know, people's perfect lives. They're just showing their perfect lives. And you know, there are people who, if you ever follow any Insta influencers who like talk about, you know, here I am, I'm supposed to be living this aspirational life and I just wanna kill myself. Or I can barely get out of bed in the morning. You know, it's a farce. Life is challenging and it's awesome. It's, I always say it's awesome, awful. It is amazing and it'll take the, you know, the wind out of you. It'll knock the wind out of you. It'll break your heart. It's both. It's all of it. It's this stew, this wonderful pie that we are baked into that has every ingredient and you'd want them all. Um, you want cinnamon in the pie, but you don't want to eat just straight cinnamon, you know, it would make you gag. So I think that being yourself is a lifelong, very 
introspective, um, individual journey. Your, your journey is not going to look like anybody else's. And um, that you have to really want it. Only way you're going to get it is because you really want it, because you want an authentic, genuine, happy life. And I think that's one of the things that many people came to after you know being locked down and having the world turn upside down the way that it did. It really helped clarify what was most important for people and what they really cared about and what they were willing to let go of. And I think in light of the continuing challenges in the world that it's really important to keep parsing that. What's important to me? What's necessary? What can I let go of? Who do, in the face of this, you know, I'm always asking myself this, especially when I'm challenged. I'm training myself to ask this question. In the face of this, who do I want to be and how do I want to show up? Because it's on me. My life is on me. It's not on anybody else. And so sometimes in relationships, I think that we are looking for other people to fix everything. And and that's not, that's a recipe for a divorce down the road. That's a recipe for a breakup. That's a recipe for some real upset in a relationship. Not to say that there aren't things that we do really provide for the people in our relationships. My husband and I give each other similar things, but also very different things. Um... I will always be the one who's making sure that he's taking care of himself, that's feeding him good food, that's encouraging him, that's loving him, that's trying to see him in the very best light that I can. I've trained myself to do that. Um, you know, I am divorced. I was married for 25 years and I had, for many of those years, a very successful relationship. I always say it was successful until it wasn't. One of the things I want to say about relationships and marriage specifically is that we have been told that the only relationship worth having is the one that lasts forever. And you're just looking for your forever relationship. Well, let me ask you guys, how many long relationship, happy, long and happy, not long and unhappy, not long and frustrated, but how, how many long, happy relationships do you know? Do, do you count among the, the people you know? How many marriages do you know that last, you know, 40, 50, 60 years? I don't know many of them. I know maybe if I, maybe five, like really long term ones. Not many, which is not to say that's not awesome if you have it, but I think it, I think in relationship, relationships are here to teach us and to help us grow. And um, I think that um, we have been sold this, I'm just going to say it, this bill of goods that a long-term relationship is, is like the measure of your success. And I certainly felt that for many years. And I had to really like get clear with myself when I was getting a divorce that um, not being married did not mean that it was not a successful relationship. It meant that we had reached our expiration date and that it was time to let go and move on. Easier said than done. I have children. We had a whole 25, 27, almost 28 year life together. We still share children. So it's been really important that we figured out a way to still be friends with each other. But I believe that relationships oftentimes are here to teach us and they're here for a certain amount of time and then we're, they're done. They're done. And it's not an indictment of the goodness or badness of that relationship necessarily. That was really long-winded, and I don't know if um, that helped, but I really hope that it did. Um, also, uh, they asked, when you feel as though you've been hurt, 
um, by someone close to you? How do you learn to form new relationships without the fear that they'll just hurt you the same way? How do you trust people? And I gotta say, you just do it. You just do it. You just take the risk and trust again. I feel very strongly like when your heart is broken, it's cracked open and now you're bigger. You're bigger. The idea of closing down after you've been hurt makes a lot of sense, right? It does. And it will not bring love and fulfillment into your life. You've just got to be willing to, um, to take the chance. You got to be willing. And it's hard. It's, it's hard. Somebody says it's the punch that you don't see coming. And yeah, that happens. Life is risky. Relationships can be risky. But they're really worth having. Because if you're here to learn and grow, then you will find that every relationship is here to treat, teach you something really important about yourself. And all you can do is when you're having problems trusting other people, it might also be pointing that you too, that you're really having trouble trusting yourself, trusting your judgment. How could I have gotten it so wrong? I understand that and it's hard. It's, you know, there's no simple answers to any of this. Relationships are very, very complicated. But I, again, I stand by the most important relationship you'll have is with yourself. And if you are taking care of yourself, um, you know, you're gonna do a lot better. Um, somebody wants to know, how do you get through a breakup without looking weak? My question is, why do you have to look strong? Breakups hurt. Breakups destroy us oftentimes for a while, not forever. They only destroy us forever if we never let them go, if we never forgive ourselves and the other person and be willing to move on. They, um, let me, there's another question here. I wanna make sure I get to them both. Um, I think that when we're trying not to look weak goes to potentially maybe what was going on in the relationship, which is why it's not there in the first place, because the people in the relationship weren't being really authentic and truthful with each other and how we looked for each other was more important than how we were with each other. That you needed to be strong for that other person. And I'm not saying like, guys, I'm not saying like I've got all this down. I'm just saying these are the things that I know that I'm always checking in with myself and I use them as things along the way so that I can um, grow and learn and really my goal is happiness. I just wanna be happy. I just wanna be peaceful. I wanna be healthy. I wanna be mentally healthy. I wanna be physically healthy. And those go together. They, they, they are things that go together. And so maybe it's letting go of needing to look strong. Letting yourself, you know, when a, when, um, when a relationship ends, it's really challenging and there's a lot of grief. It's a death and it's letting yourself experience that death. And, you know, we were never intended to all be strong all the time. Um, how do you look strong, stay strong and be stronger after a breakup? Well, get rid of needing to look strong unless you want to go to a gym and literally, you know, lift weights and get strong, build your core, build your calves, build your quads, build it all. So that's how you look strong. It's, it's a physical thing. Stay strong is how do you nurture yourself after the breakup? 
How, do you let yourself feel it? Or do you push it over here, postpone it, don't deal with it? It's just waiting. It's just waiting for you to deal with it. We can't, the thing I've learned at my age is, um, hey AJ, is that a feeling, I am meant to feel, I'm meant to feel the shitty stuff and the fucked up stuff and the joyful stuff and the amazing stuff. Like I am meant to experience all of it. I can't just experience the, the good stuff. I have to experience all of it. And so, you know, you can, um, that's how, whoops, I'm trying to get this to open back up. There we go. Um, so that's how you get stronger after a breakup is by nurturing yourself and taking care of yourself and don't having, uh, you know, have realistic expectations that this is gonna take a minute. It's gonna take a minute to get over and that's okay. That must mean you're human. I think that investing in ourselves first just makes us so much more available in our relationships. And it also helps us to have clarity about what we don't want in our relationships and what we're not willing to um, live with in relationships. And it helps us to get out of the relationships that aren't serving us, that are to our detriment, that um, are wounding our souls. And you know, those are really, those are the tough ones. Um, somebody just said 100% transparency up front. Yeah, I think you've got to really be honest with that person that you're with and like let them see who you are. Let them know you. And it's hard, you know, those first blooms of attraction or passion or love is... Um, and P.S., I'm seeing you guys talk to each other, and I love that. I love that. I love that. Be friends with each other. Support each other. It's so important. Like, we could grow a beautiful community of people supporting each other. I would love to see that. Um, uh, where was I? Sorry. Um, but that we need... Oh, where was I, guys? I lost it because I started looking at those because you guys are so smart and I love how you're talking to each other. But being in a relationship is um, what we're meant to do. There's so many different kinds. And um, being in a love... Oh, it was about letting people see who you are. Um, when that first bloom you know, fades or that first time you're with that person and now you're upset about something, like to be really honest about it. And it helps if you already have a commitment to yourself to be honest to yourself. And um, I would say go into any relationship really right out of the gate, being really, really honest. Like, because if they can't handle that in the beginning, they're not going to handle it later on. It also lets you know this is a person who um, is worth being in relationship with. Or that I can trust to be honest with. And that's a, another way. It's like that's how you start building trust. And that's how you learn trust. Like take the cue. The person's not hanging with you. Take the cue that somebody is not... Um, responding in kind. Well, now you know, maybe that's somebody who you can't trust. You know, they always say like the red flags were there, but I just didn't want to see them because they were so hot or they were so successful or they were so smart or whatever, or they were so nice, but there were red flags everywhere. And we've all done it and it's okay because then we learn like you get out of that relationship and you get out of that situation where you got sucker punched or beaten up you know metaphorically hopefully not physically and um and that's how we learn 
That's how we learn. And that's why it's like I say, relationships are not necessarily meant for all, all time and eternity. They're just meant to teach us. And that's so funny. Uh, you guys are hilarious. Um, it's 35 minutes. I've been going on and on. There's so much that I could talk about about relationships. We can keep the conversation going. It always, I really love it when you guys drop in comments and let me know, um, you know, what's on your mind, what you're thinking about. We don't always have to, you know, talk about serious subjects. We can talk about all kinds of things. Um, but I think that relationships are up, man. They are up. And uh, I love you too, Hiro. Um, oh, I love it. Robbie Mason. Are you from Baltimore? Calling me hun. I love that. Um, it's, they are challenging and they are, are, you know, the, I will say this. One last piece. Um, I have talked about this before. Um, which is um, the people who I've had the worst experiences in my life. I call them my sacred teachers. They have taught me more about myself, who I am, what I am, what I will tolerate, what I won't tolerate, what I give away to easily, what I should be asking for what uh you know what my boundaries are how i gave away my boundary you know our sacred teachers the people who have challenged us the most really is something that we can learn from and if we can wrap into that forgiveness forgiveness for ourselves for being in relationship with this person and ultimately forgiveness for them because hurt people hurt people. And it's like forgiveness, not, you gotta really mean it, but it is the ultimate healer of our hearts. It really is. Anyway, I love you guys. Forgive the haters, pineapple is a valid pizza topping. It's true, it is valid, and I did tell you that. I love you guys so much. Um, I, you know, Friday on fire, yes! And wake up Wednesday, yes! And I'll come up with the name on Thursday. Um, I, you know, I never know what I'm gonna drop in, so I just uh, recommend go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification button. I never know really when I'm going to get a, a an inspiration to jump on here. But I love you guys very much. Like so much. I appreciate that you come and spend time with me. Um, drop comments below. And if you've got more relationship questions and or thoughts, um, go ahead and drop them. And I will absolutely go ahead and answer them. And I love you guys so much. I have no idea when I'll be back again. <laughs> Not a clue. But until then, please, please, please take good care of your hearts and yourselves and each other and be nice because there's a whole lot of meanness out there. And the only way to counteract the meanness is with some niceness. I love you guys.